Cycling champion Lance Armstrong has dropped his fight against doping allegations. He's always denied using performance-enhancing drugs, but Armstrong's decision still prompted the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency to strip him of seven Tour de France titles and ban him from the sport for life. Uh, to talk about this, I'm now joined by Armstrong's lawyer, Tim Herman. He's on the line with me from Austin, Texas. Tim, first of all, why did Lance Armstrong decide not to fight this? Well, there were <clears throat> several reasons. I think the, the, the principal reason was that, uh, as you may recall, he's been dealing with this uh, uh, assault on him for two and a half years. Uh, on a very intensive basis, first in Los Angeles, where uh, the United States attorney elected not to prosecute uh, after a two-year investigation. And then uh, USADA uh, began pursuing him right at right on the heels of that. So he and he has been under un indescribable stress, both emotionally and financially for two and a half years trying to fight this off. That, that's, I, I would say that's the first reason. Okay. How did that stress manifest itself? Well, he was, uh, the financial stress, it was a very expensive proposition uh, and has been having to fight this on several legal fronts. That's the first thing. The second thing is it's just taken a huge toll on him personally, uh, uh, both emotionally and physically. He is the probably one of the two or three greatest athletes of our generation, so he tolerates it better, but he finally just had enough. He had to move on. Okay, and how did it manifest itself physically, Tim? Well, he was, uh, if he was he's a very, very fit person, so when, when I say it manifested itself physically, I really mean more emotionally and more in terms of his outlook, his, uh, his uh, demeanor and that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, are you saying also that he couldn't afford to, to go forward and fight this? Well, it was a huge, it was a huge uh, burden. There, there, there's no doubt that it was a huge burden and there's no doubt that that did play uh, a part in this. But I think that the, the the other reason, the the most significant, I guess not perhaps not the most significant, but a significant reason was the fact that no athlete ever wins in a USADA proceeding. Uh, I think athletes have uh, prevailed in two of 74 uh, proceedings uh, with USADA. That's, and the the uh, the process is is rigged, and there's no other way to put it. So, the thought of going through another two years and, and appeals to not to United States courts, but to uh, courts in Switzerland, uh, it, it was just too big a, a mountain to climb. How is the process rigged, as you put it? The process is rigged. Uh, the athlete has gets to pick one arbitrator, and uh, if I, <clears throat> if you can hang on, even though the uh, even though they claim that the that the uh, process is fair, the arbitrations always result in. Uh, the athlete uh, losing. The, even the athletes' arbitrators uh, are. Uh, even the athletes' arbitrators, the, the athlete who can pick one arbitrator, mm -hmm. they. I'll, I'll, I was just pulling up here a quote from uh, Justin Gatlin's case. Now, Justin Gatlin. You may recall he finished third in the 100-meter dash in the Olympics recently. He was uh, DQ'd for four years for taking his uh, ADD medication, which USADA uh, determined that 
did not enhance his performance and was for his medical condition. And one of the arbitrators in that case, the the arbitrator, you know, that was selected by the athlete, said about USADA it, it, that they're willfully violating the law, behaving as if they're above the law, and they're nothing more than bullies. And the and requested the federal government to take a serious look at how USADA mm-hmm. conducts its business. Mm-hmm. Tim, let me let me just ask you this because okay. in in this scenario by giving up like this, you and your client Lance Armstrong uh never force the anti-doping agency in the United States to make their case. And as a result, your client has been stripped of all seven of his titles. Why not at least force them to make their case? Well, you can, if you force them to make their case, if you go through their process, of course, you've got, uh, you're, you're in the process that we just talked about, oh. a, a, an unfair uh, process. And, and most of this, uh, most of this is old, old news. I mean, everybody's heard Floyd Land, what Floyd Landis has to say, and everybody's heard what uh, Tyler Hamilton has to say. So, uh, I think that the the fundamental uh, one fundamental concept is you saw it as responsible for uh, United States athletes. They've they've tested Armstrong scores of times. He's passed 500 tests uh, and never failed one. And so, uh, I think people need to uh, look at those facts and make coming to their own conclusions about this. What was Lance's reaction to learning that he is losing his titles and will now be banned from the sport for life? Well, uh, he's a retired cyclist uh, anyway, but his reaction was uh, was pretty much pretty much exactly what uh, what people close to him, uh, their reaction. And, and incidentally, it would be the, uh, at least the same concept that's held even by these people who are allegedly going to testify against him. They know, and if the case was tried, they would confirm that the best rider, the most dedicated rider, the most gifted rider, the most focused rider, won all of those tours. And every every uh, competitor will confirm that on any level playing field, Armstrong's the best. Without and, doping. You're saying he never doped. That's what I'm saying. And but I'm saying that th- that these same competitors will tell you, even the ones that are accusing him, will tell you that the best rider won, no matter what. Tim, I I know you were saying he had the same reaction as his fans and friends. Could you uh, describe his reaction, Lance Armstrong, your client's reaction, when he found out that he was being stripped of his titles? Well, uh, that was, uh, we assumed that that's what uh, they would do. So Lance has been... You know, he he's the one that made the decision uh, not to go forward, and so he he did that knowing full well that they could take the titles away from him, or they could try to take the titles away. They don't really have the authority to take the titles away, incidentally. But uh, even if they do it, and for some reason the international people recognize what they've done, he knows who won. And he knows uh, that he won a fair and square. Will so you? Uh, that that was his reaction. Of course he's of course he's uh, disturbed by it, but but in his heart he knows the best rider won. Will you let it go now, or will you try to make an argument to the International Cycling Union that they shouldn't follow suit of the United States Anti-Doping Agency and that they should keep the titles intact? 
Well, we've certainly suggested that that's what they should do, and based upon what they have said, uh, that they that USADA does not have jurisdiction, that we assume that they won't recognize what USADA has done. But uh, is it Carol? Yes, it is. Yeah, uh, Carol. I, we, we don't we don't have any control over what USADA and UCI and the UCI do from this day forward. That dispute is between them. And the re one of the main reasons that we didn't go through with the uh, USADA uh, arbitration was because of that dispute. If we go through that dis if we go through that process, and then we face potentially another process based on the same allegations in a diff with UCI. So we followed the UCI rules to the letter, and and we hope that they'll continue to enforce them. 